All right, I think it's gonna become a meme on my channel that I'm gonna to have to remake this build again. So at first when Strain was announced and we knew there was going to be an ability to spawn the companions or threatlings, I was very excited to make that build. Well, when Lightfall finally dropped, a lot of the fragments that were going to increase that playstyle was just locked behind the day one raid completion. Bungie did end up releasing an update to unlock all those fragments, which was very good, but then we fell into not having weaponry for this exact build. So after grinding and getting a bunch of weapons that I wanted for this build, this is the video you will see today. But Bungie came out and decided to add one of the best weapons for this build, and it is a raid weapon. The brand new raid auto rifle has such a unique combination that it's going to take this build to the next level. And we'll get more into that later. And the chest piece even looks really cool if you're trying to make this like witch doctor minion spawning type build. And of course, on my day one completion, I got neither of those things. So hopefully within a month or two, once I've gotten all this stuff to drop on my account, I can end up making the final ultimate threatening build for you all. So so if you all want to see that, be sure to hit that sub button, turn those notifications on. The support is truly appreciated. But I will go on to say that the one you're going to see in today's video is still very, very strong and it's pretty much 90% of the way there. Just having that right weapon is honestly going to make this build just absurd. All right, so jump right into it. Let's take a look at our subclass and we're going to be running the aspects Mindspun Invocation and Weaver's Call. Mindspun Invocation is an aspect that basically upgrades all your grenades in different ways. The main grenade we're going to be running is Threatling Grenade. Grenade. So with my spun invocation, when you hold down, you will consume your threatling grenade and you will actually generate five perch threatlings on you instead of just making three when you normally throw it. If you don't know the way perch threatlings work, essentially they're just going to hover around you. You can have up to five and when you shoot or melee an enemy, they will actually go out and attack an enemy. And what's really cool with the warlock is if those threatlings don't find anything to attack, they will actually come back to you and again, perch on you. And once again, you can have up to five. So the warlock is all about upgrading your threatlings and just have an infinite amounts of them and this build is going to play into that very well and your other aspect is weaver's call so cast your rip to weave three threatlings and deploy any threatlings you have perched so obviously that's going to pair really well with mind spun invocation because if you perch those five threatlings you can then pop your rift and then you will add an additional three so that means you'll have eight threatlings going out to attack enemies and these things can do quite a bit of damage you have a little threatling army that can just destroy everything now even if you don't have any perch threatlings it's still really good to get those three threatlings out of your class ability it kind of turns your class ability into a threatling grenade in a way which is really really cool and it gives an offensive capability of it now your melee is rk needle you can't change this out but this is a really good melee so you can just throw it into an enemy and unravel them unravel kind of works like these little green nanites kind of like from outbreak perfected they can kind of be viewed as a companion in a way because they are indeed just little nanite things that fly around and attack enemies and the more damage you do to whatever has them on them will actually just create more so between threatling and your unraveling nanites, essentially you have two different ways for everything else just to kill enemies while you really don't have to do anything. Now, Rift, you can go with whatever you want to. I just go healing Rift for survivability. And then for the Super Needle Storm, again, you can't change it out, but the Needle Storm is a very, very strong super for doing some just instant boss DPS. It does do more damage than Nova Bomb, and it will also spawn Threatlings, which will play heavy into some of our fragments, and it will make the super do even more damage. Now, before we get into the fragments, I do want to say everything in your kit pretty much will have the ability to spawn Tangles. Tangles are essentially green war mine cells that you can shoot to blow up, you can pick them up, and throw them they'll blow up they just do a little bit of ad clear and they will play more into the pill later once we get into some of our armor now for fragments though we are going to be running throughout of warding so picking up an overpower grants woven mail this is a really really good fragment you pick up an orb you're going to get 60 percent damage reduction for 10 seconds this can reproc every time you pick an orb up and obviously orbs are everywhere in the game right now because of the new armor charge system so you could pretty much just have a permanent up tom on 60 percent damage reduction now also running threat of rebirth so strand weapon final blows have a chance to create a threatling since this whole build is about creating threatlings as much as possible this just means if you're running a strand weapon you will now in fact have the ability to also create some additional threatlings now we're also going to be running threat of evolution so threatlings travel farther and deal additional damage this is a no-brainer if your whole build is based around these little threatling companions you want them to do more damage and they will also travel a little further which is cool then finally threat of generation so dealing damage generates grenade energy so this is really really strong this just means every time you damage with literally everything in your kit you will generate more grenade energy which just means you can always consume your threatling grenade to always have five perch threatlings on you pretty much at all times 
and this will get even better once we get the new raid weapon which again we will get into in a little bit but for our exotic we're going to be running the swarmers this has the exotic perk swarmers destroying a tangle spawns a threat lead. your threat leads unravel targets that they damage so like i said earlier pretty much everything in your subclass is going to have the ability to spawn tangles so this just means when you blow that tangle up from shooting it or picking it up and throwing it however you want to do it you will spawn two threat lanes, which is very, very good if you're playing into a threat lane based build. Now, what is really cool with this is the fact that your threat lanes will unravel targets. So like I said earlier, the unravel is those green little nanites. This just means the threat lanes are basically creating other smaller companions. And since you're having so many threat lanes everywhere, you're always going to have this unravel effect everywhere on enemies. And you're just going to see the whole battlefield covered with green threat lanes and green nanites. And it is just really, really cool to see everything kill everything for you. Now, stats for this build definitely go 100 resilient so you can get as much damage reduction as possible this will stack with woven mail which is really really strong then next go for 100 discipline so you can get your grenade back as fast as possible this just means you can have more threatlings out on the battlefield and then if you can get to 100 recovery that is definitely what i would prioritize next because this will let you heal faster in battle but on top of that you'll get increased rift cooldown which is obviously going to pair really well with weaver's call so you can shoot out all your threatlings at one time now weapons for this build there is one main thing we need to talk about and that is is the hatchling perk so this just means when you get a precision final blow or rapid non-precision weapon final blows you'll create a threatling obviously an easier way to do it is to get a precision kills so you just guarantee yourself a threatling but what is really cool is that this will pair with threat of rebirth so your strain weapon final blows have a chance to create a threatling you can essentially create two threatlings with hatchling and that fragment which is really really strong so now not only do your weapons your subclass and even your exotic have ways to create these threatlings your super even does it literally everything in your kit will create these things and it plays super well into the build so this is what took me so long because at first i thought round robin was going to be the go-to since this is a high impact hand cannon that does have hatchling on it but unfortunately this thing honestly barely kills anything in higher level content like it takes four to five shots and it only has 11 in the magazine with an extended mag and it unfortunately just is not the best pick in my opinion now in low end content this thing actually is a lot of fun because it will one shot enemies and you'll constantly be procking that persistence on it over and over again and that is the problem with a lot of these hatchling weapons is that they don't have really good perks in the left column so far in the game until the raid weapon came out so this is the brand new strand auto rifle which not only looks really cool but this is a rapid fire frame so this is going to perform just like quicksilver storm which i know a lot of people like to use with strand builds but unfortunately i don't think quicksilver works very well with this build because i think hatchling is just super strong and the ability to create tangles with quicksilver honestly just doesn't matter that much when your subclass is already doing it but regardless this auto rifle not only can come with hatchling in the second column but in the first column, it can come with demolitionist. Yes, you heard that right. You're going to have a gun that can give you grenade energy on top of making threatlings for you 24 seven. Now, obviously you can go on and see the synergy with the aspect of generation. So dealing damage to the auto rifle will give you grenade energy and getting kills with it will give you grenade energy alongside creating those threatlings it is going to be the best weapon to pair with this build by far and i cannot wait to craft it but as a substitute right now i am just running the neomuna smg with hatchling on it this thing is not bad it's just kind of okay like it's just not going to even compare to what that auto rifle is going to do that is by far going to be the best in slot weapon for this entire build now for other weapons you can honestly run whatever you want to i just have one of the neo Muno weapons equipped right now and then i have a lot of items breath because i've been having a lot of fun with this but whatever your team is running for you know, dps or just whatever special weapon you want to run you can obviously equip that again what's really cool if we go back over to the raid weapons really quick is the fact that there hasn't really been any good strand power weapons but of course with the raid launch we now have a rapid fire frame grenade launcher and grenade launchers are pretty good now so this just means now you could have a strand power weapon to take advantage of strand weapon mods like reloaders uh surges anything like that and it will still pair well with your primary weapon and what's also really cool about this rate origin trait is that if you have multiple weapons of this set you'll get more handling and reload speed so it 
I swear, they just decided to make this Threatling build. Uh, Tom gated it as much as they could with the first part not being able to get the fragments and now not even being able to get some of the best weapons in the game for it. But regardless, let's move on to our artifact and let's take a look at some things I would highly recommend for this season. Now, Arthras Mods Grenade and Strand are very good because this will reduce the cost of all your grenade and strand based mods. If you are running Neomuna weapons, put Defiant Armory and Origin Homes on. It's going to be really good as well because this will actually increase the Origin Trade's effectiveness of those weapons then untangler is going to be very good so when you destroy a tangle with a strand weapon you will suspend enemies around that explosion so this just means now the threatling build has a way to suspend enemies since you're mainly using strand weapons in the first place on top of that you have allied unraveling so rapid weapon final blows with strand will grant your weapon unraveling rounds this is really really strong because now not only your threatling is going to be unraveling enemies your weapons will as well and again you're mainly playing into strain in the first place you also have the access to threaded blast so when you destroy a tangle with a strand weapon it will create a larger and more damaging explosion this just now means that tangle you're blowing up is not only spawning threatlings that will also unravel enemies it now just has a bigger explosion it will suspend enemies and you're granting yourself unraveling rounds all the time. Now, other stuff, things like counter weave. So when you stun champions, you'll get some energy for your least strained ability, which is really cool. And then prismatic transfer. If no one's running strand, you do pop your one and done super. You will actually just give everyone a 20% damage increase, which is also really nice. And then for champions, overload auto SMG is going to be a must have if you are running the new Moon SMG or if you get the new auto rifle, because that means you'll have overload. And then once you have unraveling rounds, you can actually stun barrier champions with unraveling weapon rounds equipped so that means your primary weapon can do overload and barrier and then you can have literally anything else to stun unstoppable that is also part of the reason i'm running leviathan's breath it's because it does have intrinsic unstoppable now these are the mods i'm going to be running if you want to copy them down really quick to figure everything out for yourself but getting right into the in-depth description we're going to be running strand siphon so when you get rapid weapon kills with a strand weapon we're creating an orb this is obviously a no-brainer orb is going to give you super energy it's going to give you armor charge that will play into mods later then i also just have a heavy ammo finder and heavy ammo scout so i can just make a bunch of heavy and then i can also make it for my teammates unfortunately with this build things like ashes to assets don't work because if you are consuming that grenade for some reason that doesn't give you a bonus super energy when your threatlings kill enemies i guess because it kind of makes them into perch threatlings instead of just the threatling grenade itself but if that did work, that would be really cool. And I would highly recommend taking this. But as of right now, these are just probably your best mods to slot in. Now, I'm also going to be running a strand loader so I can reload my strand weapons even faster. And then I'll run double grenade kickstart. Since I want to get my grenades back as fast as possible, this will allow me to when I expend my grenade energy, I'll just get some grenade energy back. And if I have armor charges, it will actually grant me a little bit more grenade energy, which is really, really cool. Pairing two of these together will indeed stack and just give you some more energy. Now, for chess piece, always, always run resistant mods. There is no point in the game where you should not be running these. You just always take less damage, and then you can obviously swap these out for whatever damage is coming at you on whatever encounter you're doing. Now, for boots, I do like to run a recuperation to get some health out when I pick up an orb, an innervation, so I get some grenade energy back when I pick up an orb, and insulation, so I get some class ability energy back when I pick up an orb. So, with all these together, you're getting health, grenade energy, and class ability energy. And with our subclass, you're also being granted woven metal. So, you're getting that 60% damage reduction alongside healing yourself which is really, really strong. And you're making orbs everywhere and your teammates are making orbs everywhere. So you're always getting these back. Obviously your grenade and class ability also are very important in this build. Then finally for our class item, I am gonna be running double utility kickstarts. This again will work the exact same way as grenade kickstart. The only difference is, is that only one of them will take advantage of armor charge since using one of those abilities will go on and use all the armor charge you have. But these still do work even if you don't have armor charge, which is something to definitely be noted. So this just means no matter what, you're always getting an extra grenade and class ability cooldown when you use them. I do also just have a bomber on here. So when I use my class ability, I'll get some grenade cooldown back. Because the thing you can do is you can actually pop your threatling grenade, hold it down to get your five threatlings, and then pop your class ability to get those eight threatlings out then pop your super to do damage and that will also spawn threatlings and you could just nuke a boss and just do so much damage and then obviously if you pop your grenade you get grenade energy and then when you pop your rip you will also get grenade energy back so you can go on and have another threatling grenade ready to go but that is pretty much the build as a roundup all your mods is just making so you get your energy back as fast as possible you want to have this threatling grenade on you pretty much at all times with minus one invocation you can even pop this before you go into a fight and it will just 
recharge while you're kind of running through an area, which is really good because they will stay on you forever. Again, you can have up to five if you need to get Weaver's Call proc just to get a bunch of Threatlings out at once. You have your Rift to do that. All your fragments are giving you damage reduction, improving your Threatlings in so many ways, letting you get your Threatling grenade back as much as possible. Your Super is really good. Your Swarmers, your Exotic is playing into this to make more Threatlings, unravel enemies. And then your Artifact mods are also making it so your weapons could just do mass destruction if you're running strand weapons which is really really good and also the weapons will have hatchling on them to make even more threatlings the whole point is to make as many threatlings as possible let them do all your bidding for you and just have a bunch of fun with it now if you were curious this is the transmog i'm running i do not have that raid chest piece yet but that is for sure what i'm going to be equipping once i also do get that raid weapon fully crafted and again you can fully expect to see an updated build for this once all that is unlocked but all right i think that's going to do it all for me let me know what you all think about threatling build in the comments below if you all would like to try it out i will have a demo of this in the description below as well and as always if you didn't join and learn anything new consider subscribing drop a like and turn those notifications on also if you like joining my discord or following any of my socials all that will be linked in the description as well but just know watching this video is way more than enough and that every single bit of support from you all is truly appreciated thank you all so much for watching this one and have a great day peace